Okay, on to number 14. Here's number 14. We have two point masses. M1 is 49 kilograms, so it's a little bigger, so I'm going to draw it larger. Even though it's a point mass, I think it helps to visualize. And then the other is M2 of only 8 kilograms. And they say, where must a third point mass be placed? How far from M1? So that the net force on M3 is zero. Let me first add in the distance. This total distance is 20 meters. And I have to figure out where, here's my M3. And I have to figure out where I need to put it. Should I put it over here so that the net force is zero? Should I put it over here? Should I put it right in the middle? First point to make is there. these things are out in outer space. They're in outer space. Far from any planets, stars, far from, let's just say, any other objects. So pretend it's just them, just these three. They're not on Earth, you know, there's not a gravity force pulling them down. The only thing there is the three masses. So Newton's law of universal gravitation says every two masses are attracted with the force of gravity. All right, then M3 is going to get pulled to the left because it's attracted toward M1. And M3 is going to get pulled to the right because it's attracted toward M2. But would the forces cancel out here? Well, look at the equation. If we compare the left side, we would be plugging in this mass and this mass to get that force of attraction between M1 and M3. And M1 is going to be bigger. We would have M3 here. Then if I look at the other uh, the other force on the right, I consider the attraction between M3 and M2. Well, M2 is a lot smaller. If I plug in M2 here, I'm making the numerator much, much smaller. And I've placed them the same distance apart so that the R would be the same. So you would have a, a far smaller force pulling to the right and a far greater force pulling to the left. And that will not cause the net force to be zero. So how do we make the net force zero? We can't put M3 right in the middle. I mean, if we, if we come over and we put it really close to the big mass, if we put it really close to the big mass, we're making this mass huge. We're making the distance tiny. There will be a huge gravitational force of attraction toward M1 and a small force of attraction toward M2. So that doesn't work either. Okay, then you might realize we need to put it closer to the smaller mass. That's the trick. So we have to put it somewhere over here and then the force of attraction to the left and the force of attraction to the right will cancel out. I'll call this F, let's call it F13. It's the force between masses one and three. And this other right arrow, uh, this right arrow, I'll call F23. Now I can write in some distances. This is R13. And over on the other side, we have the distance between two and three. Like that. Okay. We've set up this distance, we've, we've placed M3 so that the two forces are equal. On the left side, I can plug in with Newton's law of universal gravitation. So I'm plugging in the two masses, M1, M3, because I'm talking about the force between those two masses. And I plug in the distance between those two masses. And what's the right side going to be? Pause the video. 
and try to write down what the right side will be. Okay, it'll be G, M2, M3 over R23 squared. When you solve these problems, you always have to show this step as your first step at a very minimum. You can show this step too if you like, but you can't skip ahead to the final equation. You have to start here. Okay, we can cancel out the M3s. We can cancel out the Gs. And look at what we have. I'm gonna plug in for M1. I have 49 over uh, R13 squared equals eight over R23 squared. All right, let me just hold that for a second. I've got this equation, but if I look back up to the distances, I realize that adding R13 plus R23 gives me the total, 20. Hmm, well, wait a second, I now have two equations and two unknowns. So I can solve this using algebra. We're trying to find how far M1 should be placed, M3 should be placed from M1. How far, that's the distance R, from M1. So we wanna know the distance R13. That's really our unknown. This is kind of what they've asked us to find. So this distance we said was 20. My unknown is R13. So I need to plug something in for R23 to get it, make it go away. All right, to figure out what I should plug in, let me isolate R23 in this equation. I'll start by uh, cross multiplying. So I have 49 R R23 squared. equals eight, R13 squared. I'm trying to isolate R23 so that I can plug in right here to replace it with something else. I'll divide both sides by, by uh, 49. And eight over 49, 0.163265. I'll just do that, dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna square root both sides. And the R23, which is squared, comes out of the radical. This value, 0.16, blah, blah, blah. If I square root that, I get 0.404. R2, uh, R13 is squared, so it comes out of the radical as well. And now I have something that I can plug in for R23. So how do I solve this? Well, this is like saying x plus half of x equals 20. You know, you would combine the two, three halves of x, and then you would solve for x. Or if it were, we could imagine that maybe instead of this, it's x plus 2x equals 30 or something. And so even though there's no 1 here, it's implied. You know, you have 1 and you have 2, so that makes a total of 3x. It's like we're factoring out the x and then adding the coefficients. That's exactly what we do here. There's a one right there. And we could factor out the R13s and add together just the coefficients. And what would we get? We would have 1.404 R13 equals 20. So if we do, uh, let's just do, let's see. 20 over 1.404. The distance we get is 14 for R13. So 14 meters, apparently that's how far away 
that's this distance. It's how far away M3 should be placed from M1. Okay, let's try to just do the setup for this next one. <clears throat> We've got two masses. This one is bigger. This one is smaller. And so I have to place the third point mass. Of course, I'll have to put it closer to the small mass and farther from the big mass to even out the force. M3 is going to be attracted to the left by M1. And M3 will be attracted to the right by M2. This time, the total distance is 10 meters. And I could also write down this distance is R13, the distance between mass 1 and 3. And that distance is R23. So first thing I know is that when I add R13 plus R23, I get the full 10 meters. The other thing I know is that I've set this up, I've placed this mass so that the two forces cancel out. The net is zero. They're exactly equal and they cancel. I start by plugging in Newton's law of universal gravitation. You have to show this step. <clears throat> I can cancel M3. I can cancel big G, and then I plug in values. M2 is 1.5. I'm trying to find how far from M1. So I need R13. I'm trying to find the distance from 1 to 3. So if I look back to this equation, this is my unknown. I need to get rid of R23. So I need to find an expression for R23. Let me isolate R23 to get that expression and then plug in and replace it. If I cross multiply, I get 13.5 R23 squared equals 1.5 R13 squared. I'm isolating R23. <clears throat> I divide by 13.5. This is going to be 1 ninth. Oops. Point 0.1 repeating, that's going to be, that's actually 1 ninth. Uh, let's move this up. Okay, so I've got R23 squared equals R13 squared, or 1 ninth if you want to write it that way. <clears throat> then I square root both sides to isolate R23, right? I have the whole point here is isolating R23. And R23 comes out of the radical because it's squared and square rooted now. If you square root this, you're going to get you know, it's one ninth square rooted, so that's one third. Let's just show that. 0.3 repeating. And our one three squared comes out of the radical, we lose the square root. Okay. So right up here, now I know what I can plug in for R23. I have R13 plus 0.3 repeating R13 equals 10. So if I have one of them and then a third of them, what's the total amount that I have? I have one and a third. So then I divide both sides by the 1.3 repeating. This is going to be 10 over 1.3 repeating, 